Hello and uh, Labadienna from uh, Kaunas, uh, Lithuania. So yeah, I'm in Lithuania, uh, I'm in Kaunas, Lithuania's second city, and I've just moved there. So I thought that I could start off by, um, by showing you around the city, see some of the landmarks, uh, show you some of the street art and also a bit of the architecture. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the face mask will be adorning my neck for the whole thing um, due to Lithuania's uh, rules on wearing face masks in public. But yeah, hope you enjoy. There's a lot of Jewish heritage here that unfortunately was, um, was wiped out with World War II and Holocaust. But yeah, I'd love to go inside and have a look. Unfortunately, Covid, um, not possible right now. But yeah, the Coral Synagogue of Kaunas. Okay, so uh, for anyone into kind of geography and rivers, I guess, <laughs> I am at something called a confluence, and that is where I believe two rivers meet. So, to show you, on the right, and I think I'm correct, this is the Neris. The Neris here, and then on the other side is the Neman. Now, um, the Neris starts off in Belarus, but this is where it ends, where it meets the Neman. Whereas the Neman, on this side, goes all the way over to the uh, Baltic Sea. So it keeps on going from here all the way to the sea. And um, yeah, so that is the Neman Neris confluence of Kalnus. Okay, so next uh, stop on my tour of Kaunas is of course Kaunas Castle. Can't miss that one, can you? Um, so, here it is, from one side anyway. Now, it's not the biggest castle, let's be honest, um, but this was made in 14th century and it's believed to still be haunted because at one point it was a prison leave in 1600s at some point so um, yeah don't come here at night anyway is all I'm telling you yeah let's go and have a, have a quick close-up see what we can see Okay, so I thought I'd film um, on Lysvis Alea, which translates to some like Freedom Avenue. So normally, this is like one of the busiest streets around, especially when there's no like COVID. Um, I've been in the um, in the summer when there's a lot of people here. It's a lot busier. It is really wide, um, to be fair. So it's quite nice to spread out but it's also, I believe, the longest kind of pedestrianised road in Eastern Europe. So that goes all the way down 1.6 kilometres. So pretty much a mile long. Um, so yeah, it's really, really long pedestrianised road. And anyway, um, what you come up to at the end of Lysus Alea is um, St. Michael the Archangel Church, I think it's called. Um, I hope I got that right. Um, so this is it here, um, 
and yeah it's quite an interesting church so originally uh, this was made as a Russian Orthodox church for um, the, the Russian garrison that was here and so when Russia used to rule Lithuania before Lithuania was independent um, obviously there's Russian soldiers garrisoned in Kaunas and this was built as a Russian Orthodox church for them um, you can kind of see that from, from the style of it it does look like an Orthodox church um, but when Lithuania got independent in 1918 I think shortly after that it then became a Catholic church so so yeah it's now an operating Catholic church but was originally Orthodox Okay, so behind me we have the Jalia Kaunas, which I believe is Old Town Funicular Railway. Um, so from my understanding this was made in 1931. It's the oldest one in Lithuania. Let's have a quick look inside. I'm not going to go up it, but as you can see, pretty old. I, look inside. I don't actually know if it's working because of Covid at the moment but you can have a little look and that goes up to the top there okay and on the other side of the road didn't actually realize this was here i'm not sure if it's the whole campus or just part of it that is vitatus magnus university which is one of the universities in kaunas and as i'm sure you all know pingu is well known for teaching english there's a very good level of uh, english language is pingu <laughs> But yeah, learn English with Pingu here. Oh, uh, can't think of a better English teacher. <laughs> so the fact that the um, the railway's either either closed or um, or I just couldn't be able to get it, whichever one it was, I don't know. Um, does actually cause a bit of a problem because I've completely forgotten just how steep it actually is to get up to my next stop. Um, Obviously, that's why they actually made a railway. So, let me show you. It is quite a nice walk, I can complain. But we're going all the way up to the uh, Christ Resurrection Church, which you can just see it behind the trees there. So, and it's rather steep. Probably can't quite appreciate it from this from this, but um, yeah, not the most fun of walks. One of my one of my better decisions not to uh, not to actually bother to properly check if that was actually operating or not. But there we go, 70, 70 cents saved. So. <laughs> right, I'm nearly up the hill. Uh, God, bloody hell, I'm unfit, aren't I? Um, anyway, um, I actually think it's quite a good thing to walk up it because you can actually see a little bit more of the kind of traditional Lithuanian architecture. So in the centre of Kaunas, it's all like brick kind of building which to me I don't know it's obviously it's just as much part of Lithuanian architecture as anything else but up the road you can see see this here which that kind of wooden building is really traditional Lithuanian style here as well um, just before you get to the church which you can see there so I'm guessing again with Covid we can't come up here which uh, is a real shame because there's some amazing views of the church um, not of the church from the church should I say but um, oh god I need to catch my breath now uh, <laughs> um, yeah so here it is Christ Resurrection Church and uh, this is a really important building for Lithuanians now, this um, church was was going to be built, and they started building it after Lithuania first gained its independence in 1918. Okay, um, but then what happened was with the um, the good old World War II, they hadn't quite finished building building this church. And it was going to be a monument to to God for giving the Lithuanians their independence and their country back. They'd reclaimed it from the Russians. And then World War II happened. 
so building had to stop it was nearly finished but then obviously after world war ii the soviet union took over and what did stalin do well clearly good old stalin being a, being a good old communist wasn't going to let a uh, let a church go to waste so he turned it into a radio factory instead yeah um and then until 1988 this was a radio factory and after that the lithuanians got got some money together it took, took them a while to be fair it did take quite a long time for them to actually finish building the church um, because it wasn't only until 2004 when the church was consecrated and opened to the, the general public in 2005 so i take you around it's quite a um, it's quite an impressive structure and yeah it's a real real shame that covid is happening because honestly if you if you came to Lithuania and you're in Kaunas this is one of the sites you want to you want to see it really goes high up and I don't know exactly how how high up it is but once you get to the top you can just see for so far and you can see out on over the city so yeah, big shame check me out I've actually found what looks like an abandoned old Lithuanian house. Da, da, da. Shame because it's all roped off. But... Oh, maybe it's not a house. I don't know what that is. Okay, it might have been a block of houses or something. Interesting. Yeah, look at that. This is in Kaunas. Second city, just off the city centre. You can find these old relics. So, um, I thought I'd come out of the city centre a little bit. I'm in a more residential area now. And the main reason for that is I just wanted to kind of give you a, give you a feel of what the, the houses look like here. Because it is quite different to England. And there is a certain style in Britain. And it's quite hard to understand that. You might see in... I've seen places like Spain and France, it's always different to, to England, but these are the Lithuanian style, I don't know how to explain it, it's it's just different. Um, so this is where I am, and as you can see, lots of buildings made out of wood. And that to me is just the, the traditional Lithuanian style, um, is, you know, the houses houses made out of wood, lots of things made out of wood. As I said, you, you'll find it a lot in the villages, but in the cities like Kaunas, you obviously have to get out of the city centre where there's a lot of apartments and you can find these these kind of gems I think um, I don't know I just love the love the style and so I hope you've uh, you've enjoyed this video uh, giving you a quick tour around Kaunas and especially the city centre there's a lot more to see around the area I've only done it kind of what I could get in on foot around the city centre and yeah there's there's so much more to do and be seen here really really beautiful city often doesn't get the credit it deserves i think you know um especially i always hear people talk about like vilnius and vilnius is a beautiful city as well um, but people never seem to give countless kind of the credit it deserves and yeah i hope that i've been able to show you a little bit of, of what's going on hopefully we'll be able to come back when and covid settled down and and actually visit some of these sites a bit more and go inside or get on top of them but yeah um i hope you enjoyed it and um if you have give it a like or subscribe